Father, once again, we want to honor you this morning. We rejoice in you this morning. Our heart is gladdened. We celebrate your intentions and counsel for our life. We celebrate the way you have been coming to us. We celebrate the way you have been speaking to us. We celebrate the way you have been revealing yourself to us in this crucial day. We celebrate the way you have been communicating through your spirit to us. We are grateful that we can still hear your voice and your words, yes, is even becoming clearer to us. Your word is bringing understanding. Your word is bringing illumination to our life. In the days of great confusion and uncertainty, you are bringing clarity and certainty into our space. We are grateful this morning. We thank you. Once again, Father, as we open the word, as we open that which you have given unto us as our guide, as our pathway, as our divine blueprint, as the reference to our journey to life, as we look into this word, once again, we ask, O oh God, that we will come with a contrite heart. Lord, that we will come with a heart that is indeed willing, ready, and prepared, yes, Father, to journey with you. And to receive that which you are emphasizing for this new day. It's, this is another new day, Father. Every day you are waking us to new, new realities, fresh expressions, new positions. You're bringing us into new height. Daily we are climbing the hill of your spirit. We're coming, oh God, closer to the point and place of your divine intentions. We thank you. Our desire this morning and through this journey, oh God, is to fully unhest the all that you have ordained and prepared for us, yes, as, 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 as a pathway to come into your intentions for our generation. So, Father, this morning we incline our ears. We want to learn. Help us, oh God, to be alive, to be ready. Help us to be present, oh God. Help us to hear, help us to know, help us to embrace your heart, your mind, your will to as many that will be listening to this uh, broadcast later, to this podcast. I pray your spirit, oh God, will inject the truth that you have desired and ordained for them. I pray, oh God, that their heart will open to receive the seed of your word so that they can be impregnated, oh God, yes, Father, with destiny. I thank you, Lord, that their, yes, calling and purpose in you even will become clearer. I thank you, Spirit of the Lord, that as we continue to allow you to guide us through your spirit, to speak to us, that insight, oh God, will be given to us. Understanding will become our portion. Yes, Father, I pray that our knowledge will be greatly enhanced. Oh, Father, I thank you. I bless your name. I honor you once again this morning. I pray that your kingdom once again will come, that we will enter into a better position, a better reality of what your kingdom is emphasizing for our day. Lord, I pray that our eyes of understanding will be illuminated. Our prophetic compass, yes, will be enhanced, will be, will be calibrated, Father. We will continue to pray press in oh god as we shut oh god out every sense of distraction oh god help us to hear help us to listen help us to know help us to understand the nature of the days help us to understand the times and the season help us to be able to read help us to be able to understand what this season means what this new day means to you and to us so we can indeed be present as we offer ourselves oh father this morning, I ask, oh God, that we will become indeed that living sacrifice. That our life will become a smoke rising unto you, oh God, rising to your nostril. Lord, that our worship, that our devotion indeed will bring glory and honor unto you. So once again, I pray, oh God, that this will not just be a time of getting information. No, but this word will indeed transform us. We'll become reformed. We'll become people ready and prepared. Yes, Lord, to become the conduit, instrument that you're going to use in this season to to birth your intentions and counsel even as you have already began to use us but we want to be used the more we want to know the in and out we want to know the 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 the, 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 the dimensions the highways the realities oh god yes we want to know the height the the depth the width the length oh god of your counsels for our day so continue oh god to lead us grant us joy to always come to sit at your feet to learn from you as mary did oh god 
We want to we want to take in everything that you have for us. We want to be fully ready, mature, prepare, equip, oh God. Yes, we want to become that mature son that the that creation is waiting for. We want to become, yes, that son, oh God, that creation is waiting for. Thank you. Christ be formed again in us. We cast down imaginations. We cast down every high thing. We cast down our own ideas. We cast down our own ways. We cast down, oh God, every spirit, oh God, of confusion and distractions and the lack of knowledge. We cast them down. We ask, oh God, grant us understanding. Help us in this glorious season in time. We thank you, Lord, that you will continue to help us through your spirit. And we will continue to, yes, align ourselves and make ourselves, yes, available to, the, to your speakings, to your heart, to your voice. Oh, God, I thank you once again this morning. Everyone that you are going to be bringing to, to know, to, to understand these things, oh, God, help them, Lord, to be truly equipped, to be equipped, to be ready, to be prepared. For the glory of your name, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Once again, I want to welcome anyone joining us. Thank you, Sister Priscilla, for joining this morning. And any other person that will be uh, maybe later joining us or those that will be listening later to this broadcast, we want to welcome you. Of course, this is the Potter's Gate online broadcast. This is a place and point where we share the heart of God, the mind of God for our life, for his church. We, this is a point where we continue to allow him to train us and build us until all that heaven has ordained and desire for our life amen becomes one uh, uh, with, with our life we want to come into the fullness of god's intentions for our life and therefore uh, the things that we are looking uh, looking into amen are ordained to to help us to be awakened as we have been you know picking this word for a while now all right since uh, almost two years now the lord has been speaking to us about the spirit of awakening we want to be awakened to all the realities amen of christ's intentions and purpose for our life we want to be fully amen ready we want to be you know trained that's what the bible says in the book of ephesians amen that the, the ascended ministry i given all right for the church to be trained to be equipped so we can come into so we can fulfill god's you know plan and purpose for our life and that is the truth god has a plan and he has a purpose amen uh, uh, there are so many things that we we call a plan and a purpose amen that are contrary amen to god's plans to god's intentions to god's design for our life there's so many things that we have imbibed that we have embraced amen in the name of purpose in the name of vision in the name of objective amen that are so way so far away from amen heaven's desire and, and intentions for our life and so this this particular teaching that we've been doing from uh, 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 um, just towards end of last year, amen, to the beginning of this year, is to help us once again to recapture what is the heart of God for our life? What is the mind of God? What is God's dream for our life? What is God's vision, amen, for his church, for his body? We've been trying to understand this and I thought it's important once again that we capture, amen, the, the essence of this the, of this teaching, all right? That this is not just another teaching to help us to be able to do something. Like I always say, this is not just about being able to do something. Of course, at the end of the day, we will do something, but we will do that to which, amen, the Father has enhanced us the father has ordained for us the father has amen you know called us into yes life is about calling life is about amen a, a, a purpose and all of the things that heaven amen has designed for us are all interconnected when they function in accordance amen to how god how, how the father ordained them all right we, we don't want to be you know misjoined we don't want to be disjointed we don't want to be connected to the wrong thing amen we don't want to find ourselves wasting amen our time and our resources doing what amen we have not been ordained and tailor made for amen yes there, there, there are things that father has designed for us even as redeemed people even as christians as believers as followers of christ amen we have a point we have a place that we must fit into that we must function all right and all of this we are doing so that the body of christ amen the church of the lord amen on earth can be can be effective can be mature amen can come into fullness amen 
Amen. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this teaching. All right. Like I said, it's not just about us being able to do something and God gathering some things for ourselves. The Bible says the Lord will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. But all of this must function as we flow in the in the in the direction, in the in the pathway, amen, that he has designed for us. Every one of us, amen, has a you know divine order of, of lifestyle that God, amen, has ordained for us. Everything that God does, as we have been saying for a while, amen, is tagged with divine purpose. God, amen, is, is the author of vision. God is the author of vision. Christ is the author of vision. Not even Christ came to this world without, amen, an, an objective. The reason why Christ came, amen, is not just to perform miracles. It's not just to heal the sick. It's not just to, you know, you know, give us a good life. All of those things, amen, are secondary. The reason why he died on the cross was, amen, to redeem us, amen, yes, from sin, the nature of sin that we could not, you know, uh, uh, help ourselves from. That is the reason. So everything that God does, amen, Yes, they, they are tagged with a purpose. In the beginning, he said, let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness. And you would have thought he would stop there. No, he, he gave man a purpose. He gave him a reason. Amen. He, he, he placed him in the garden. He didn't just create him floating. He placed him within a place. He said, I want you to keep this garden, dress the garden. All right. Keep it, keep it, you know, keep it, maintain it, administrate the garden. All right. And, and, and God looked and further, he, he said, okay, it's not good for a man to be all one. You see, everything that God did, that God has done and is doing, amen, is still tied with the vampire. In case your life is floating and you don't know what you, what life is all about, you're just here and there. You don't even know why you went to school because most most time, amen, they just say grab an education. We, you, we don't even know why, amen, we are educated, amen. A lot of people today are in a career that they don't even have a reason, they don't have a sense of why such a career, amen, has been, has been placed in their hand, why they have spent so much time in school to learn something that they are not passionate about why because we live in a fallen world amen our homes family you know parents all you know it came out of this fallen society where everybody's doing everything that they thought right the bible says there was a period in time we've been reading that scripture in chronicles amen the bible says amen there was a season a period in time where israel amen was without amen the true god and it's clear that they put it that the true god and everyone did what seem right in his own eye there was a time where israel was without a true god amen where there was no teaching priest to instruct the people so everyone did what deems fit in their eyes is that not how we live life we live life from the position of what i think is right what you invest into your children is what you think is good for them what you assume is correct for them. Uh, you look at them and say, I think you must be, okay, that's why we're, and then you spend time, you spend money, you spend, you waste everything and put it into, amen, what the Lord has not ordained that child for. That's how, amen, a lot of people, you know, grew up being parented in a wrong way and we're still doing it today. And that's why you find children, all right, they've gone to school, they've learned everything and their life is still miserable. And you wonder, but, but I gave you everything. I did this, I did it for you. No, you gave the wrong thing. This is why I am, I am so, you know, passionate about this teaching that I'm, that I'm doing. This is not just, you know, to, you know, to, to, to get us excited. This is, this is a wake up call. We are living in a sacred day. We have to come back and, and really look at our life. I know a lot of people are afraid with this kind of a teaching because they are afraid to, you know, to, to, to find out that their entire life has been built, amen, on a wrong order. They are afraid that, you know, this kind of a teaching, or a, will, will, will disrupt their line of course god wants us amen to come to the point where we face the truth and if the truth is going to disrupt you it better disrupt you now so that you can begin to correct it amen than to ignore it and continue on the wrong path when you ever face the truth the truth is going to disrupt you amen you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free listen nobody 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 carries or bears the sandal amen of you getting to embrace and accepting the truth it's your choice it's my choice amen that's why people today you see they deliberately ignore the truth they deliberately ignore the path amen that will lead them because they have 
so built on a lie. They, their life is so built on a lie. They've been journeying on a path that is totally, you know, you know, opposite the direction of God. They are aware of it, but they are afraid, amen, of starting again. I know people like that. They will see the truth and just turn away. Because they are afraid of what that truth, amen, will expose. They are afraid of what that truth, amen, will demand. But guess what? You better, you better embrace the truth now. Because listen to this. You are going to get every journey in life, amen, has got a destination. You're going to get to that point where they're going to ask you, sorry, you have got into your destination. All right? No matter, no matter how you are traveling on the journey, there is a destination. The Bible said there's a way that symmetry right onto a man. It seems right. It looks right. It feels right. When you look at the thing, this, uh, this must be correct. This has to be right. This has to be true. But the Bible says the end, the end of that, of that trip, of that journey, of that, you know, value system, of that ideology, of that, you know, philosophy that you have imbibed, it says, is destruction. Think about that. That scares me, friends. There are a lot of things we have built. There are a lot of things that we have we have come to embrace. We have come to embrace the lie and we have accepted the lie as the truth. And we are doing everything. We are seeking to manage, amen, the lie as the truth. Come on. You see, these teachings are there to wake us up, to realign us, to reposition us. To, to, re, to recorrect us, amen, to bring us back to what is called the chief purpose of God. God's divine intention. When we talk about vision, I'm not talking about, you know, an idea of something you can do to become somebody great. No, no. I'm talking about, amen, the essence, the reason why you were created, why you were sent to this world. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about why, amen. Yes, you, you were sent. Every one of us, amen, are sent instrument. We are sent, amen, to feel full, to feel full, to feel full something. To complete something. To accomplish something. Yes. To pour into something. Yes. That's why we're here. That's why the church exists. All of this nonsense that we're doing in the name of church. In the name of business. In the name of society. All of these things are going to end one day. And we're going to stand and we're going to give an account. Because listen to this. When they give you a vision. They give you also resources. They're going to come. They're going to ask you. Come and give an account. How you speak. And the resource given to you. So please don't just think I'm just talking about you know purpose, vision here, all of this there. No, no, no. This this is not this is not 10 ways, amen, to start a business. Of course, if you learn the things that I'm saying, you will know the kind of business to start. You wouldn't need to waste your time be doing trial and error, you wouldn't need to be going to you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, a uh, 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 Tarsus when they have sent you to, to you know to Nineveh. You won't need to go to Nineveh when they've sent you to Tarsus. Amen. You won't need to be crisscrossing you know the world when you know where heaven has sent you. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Listen to this. Nobody promises you tomorrow. No. They gave you enough time to fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. You don't have the luxury of time. Many of us have lost families. Amen. In 2020, we lost families, friends. I mean, in, in drones, in numbers, not just one person that you see four people. Some of them are men of God that died. Some churches lost, you know, close to, you know, 10 people, 20 people. You know, you just, can, can we get to this point and still be playing with our life? This is what I'm talking about. This is about, hey, 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 they gave me a second chance. Don't you understand that if you survive COVID, and by the way, have you heard that there, there's another <laughs> there's another COVID coming? There's another COVID in the atmosphere. Have you heard that? When they give you, when they give you, amen, 
a second chance when you know that amen somebody you contacted amen had covid and that person died and you did not die amen that is a wake up call for you to find the reason why they gave you second chance for you to find the reason you see god doesn't do anything by chance or by accident no everything that god does amen are tied with divine counsel with divine purpose with divine intention god what is your plan for my life why did you i mean i had covid i didn't die there are a lot of people who had COVID, they die. God, why did you spare my life? Why did you spare my, the life of my children? In the same house, you know, eh, three, you know, three people had COVID. <laughs> you understand? Two people died, but you survived. Well, God, in the same street, your neighbor died, but you survived. God, why did you spare my life? We cannot just continue life as if, well, well, COVID is gone and uh, we're back to, we, we, you, life is no longer normal. Life is no longer normal. We have to find out. We have to go into the place of prayer. We have to seek, the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. We're not seeking the Lord so we can have more money. Come on, we need money. But that's not the reason why we're seeking the Lord. We're not seeking the Lord so we can become popular. We're not seeking the Lord so we can be something. We're seeking the Lord so we can have a blueprint of our life. When you seek the Lord, it will tell you, this is my plan for you. This is my blueprint for your life. This is my, my intentions for your life. This is my desire for your life. This is what I have amen, created you for. Not what church gave to you. Many of us, like I've been saying, because of how we grew, the environment we grew up, amen, we have come to believe certain things. And we believe those things, amen, are the reason why we live. We believe, amen, that, you know, because we grew up in a particular environment and because there's so much need there. Listen, you can grow up in an environment where, amen, God basically used that environment to prepare you for somewhere else to go and function. There are a lot of people who are in South Africa today. They're never even thinking, they've never even asked God, God, is your plan for me to remain in South Africa or for me to be somewhere else in the world? They've, it has never even come to their mind because the environment, the world that you live in, amen, the, 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 the society you live in today, amen, have shut you from the rest of the world. Now I'm talking to people born in South Africa because that's a mindset that I want to break. We've got to break that mindset. There are people born in South Africa that God, amen, does not want them to live in South Africa. And it, this is one of the reasons why there's so much problem in South Africa because many South Africans do not have an understanding of the world outside their world. Oh, truth. They don't have an understanding of the world outside their world. Everything revolves around the four walls of South Africa. You see, True biblical Christianity will begin to inform you, hallelujah, that there is a world outside your world. <laughs> Did you hear me? There is a world outside your wall. And until you begin to think, hallelujah, outside your walls, you may not come into God's intention and purpose for your life. You know, certain prayer you got to pray. That will shake you to the core. <laughs> yes. God. Is it your plan for me to remain where I am? Or do you want me to move? You see. You've got to be the one making the initiative. Your prayer must be the one. Amen. Making the initiative. God. What is your plan? When you begin to ask. Bible say ask. You will watch. You will receive. Seek. You will find. Knock. And the door will be open to you. That is not limited to asking for bread. That is not just limited to asking for something to eat. Amen. Of, you know, a nice house to live in. Or a nice dress. Amen. No. When they say ask. You can begin to ask things that relates to your life. To, that relates to your destiny. That relates to, amen. Your, 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 your purpose for existence. Ask. Seek. Knock. It's time to grow. It's time to mature. And only mature people, amen, wake into the reality of God's plan and purpose for their life. Only mature people. You see, it's children and delinquents, amen, that don't see beyond their nose. That can't see beyond their eyes. That can't see beyond, you know, what they are seeing. Their vision, amen, is limited to what is before them. Now, you've got to live, up, you've got to live above that. Some of you, amen, your purpose... And the intentions of God for your life will not come into you know, fruition until you live where you are. 
until you live, literally live where you are. Move away from some positions, some mentality. You know, you got to, they say, Abraham, yes, I've made your father of many nations, but you have to leave your father's house. You have to leave. You see, there's so many things, amen. The vision and the purpose of God in our life begins to, it will reorder your life. It will rearrange your life. You see, don't live in, in, the, in the environment of Christianity that limits your life. Don't live in the environment of a Christianity that limits your life. There is so much God has invested in you. But alas, those things will not become a manifest until you respond to the voice of God. You see, you see, you see, even Paul was on his way to Damascus. He was, he was on his way to doing the wrong thing when they relayed him. Some of us, amen, we have grown, amen, in an environment for too long that we don't even know what is happening outside our world. When God speaks to you, amen, regarding something outside your environment, you can't hear. You can't pick it. You can't, you can't compute. You can't comprehend it. Because all your world, amen, has been shaped by this wall. It's like you're living in a Shiloh. You live in a Shiloh. You just live, amen, on a farm. Grew up in the farm. Continue to live in the farm. All your vision is about the farm. You never see beyond the farm. A fish, amen. Yes, yeah, thrown in an aquarium. All your life you live in the aquarium. You never know that, amen. You are a, you are a fish and you are called to swim beyond, amen, the bounds and the limitation, amen, of a four wall called an aquarium. Your mind is still an aquarium, amen. Even when you have been brought out, amen, of, of that aquarium, amen. When you swim in the ocean, in your mind, hallelujah, yes, you, you, you have calculated the space, amen, the, 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 the space of that aquarium. You can't go beyond. There, there, there can be something else beyond, amen, that shape, that mentality that has been shaping your mind. It's my duty, amen, as a prophetic voice, amen, to break the aquarium and to tell you that it's time for you to swim, amen. It's time for you to fly if you're an eagle. If you're a lion, it's time for you to roar. And you cannot just roar, amen, in a cage. You've got to have your space. You've got to be able to do what the Father, amen, has ordained and designed your life for. I'm encouraging you this morning. There's so much I want to talk about and I'm hoping that the Spirit of the Lord will help us, amen, to see this thing. You see, th th this kind of message is, is, would challenge you and I indeed, I wanted to challenge you. I wanted to challenge you. There's going to be a disruption, a reordering. The world we live in today, amen, yes, is a world of disruption. You can see it, you know it, amen. And this disruption is not from the devil, amen. It's God doing things. is rearranging things, amen. God is the builder of all things. Every house is built by a man. But God is the builder of all things. If God is going to build your life, if you want God to arrange your life, amen. If you want to be, amen, functional. You want to be relevant. You want to be a voice for your time. You want to find and fulfill God's intentions for your life. Then you will have to listen, amen, to what I'm talking about. And you will have to listen with, amen, a humble spirit. You have to come with a contrite heart. You can't come with a prideful heart. You can't come with, well, I think I know. You don't even know what your purpose is. I told you guys... When God called me into ministry, I thought I was called to be an evangelist. Everybody in the church is called to do the, the work of an evangelist, basically. But there is a people, a man gifting called the ministry of an evangelist. So I thought because I was good in preaching and bringing leading people to Christ, I thought, well, that must be my calling. I didn't know, amen, that I was called to be a prophet because, you know, when I saw in, in, in the vision, I saw this, you will see me always use this, uh, uh, this long trumpet. That was what I saw years ago. When the Lord called me, he had this long trumpet in his mouth. And what was coming out of that trumpet, amen, was a sound, but I could interpret the sound. And the sound says, go tell my people that my coming is sooner than they expect. Well, that was still about 30 years plus ago. Almost 35, you know, almost 40 years ago. Because God called me, you know, at the very early age of my life. I think I was about 20 thereabout when I began to come into the things of God. He said, go tell my people that my coming is sooner. So I thought, well, God has called me into, a, into you know, evangelist. You know, the work of an evangelist. Of course, go tell my people. 
But you see, I never really sat down to, to, to scrutinize, to, to, to dissect. Go tell my people. I thought he was saying, go to the world and preach the gospel. He said, go tell my people. I was sent to the lordship of the house of Israel. I was sent to the church. I was sent as a wake up, vo- wake up you know, a, a, a voice. I was sent as a bell to the church. <laughs> go wake them up. That's my calling. Go tell my people that my coming is sooner. So get yourself ready, amen. Wake up from your dromedary, amen. Put your life in alignment. Begin to prepare for his coming and preparation, amen. It's not just about, oh, well, let's get prepared and be waiting. No, get walking, amen. Get doing something until later on that as I grow and develop in the knowledge of the things of God, I began to realize, wait a minute. Because every time I preach, it's like I'm addressing the body of Christ. I'm addressing the church. But I'm like, my message is not addressing, you know, you know, unbelievers, you know, lost souls, things like that. Then I began to realize, wait a minute, God has called me, yes, to, you know, to speak to his church. I'm a prophet sent to the church, to the body of Christ. Okay. And that began to make sense to me. And I began, you see, and materials God began to bring my way. People God began to bring my way. Now began to, you know, shape, yes, the arrowhead of my ministry. You understand? That's why everything that we say, amen, seem to be, you know, addressing the church. Because if the church get it right, amen, then it's easy for us to be, to be, to be, to be functioning in terms of doing the work that heaven has sent us to carry out. Hallelujah. This is very crucial, friends. I've got some things this morning I want to quickly highlight for us. Because we're we're dealing with living via divine intention. And we've been looking at the concept of Paul. At least that's the last, you know, uh, session we did. We're looking at Paul. Amen. As you know, as a as a as a as a prototype of a man, amen, who came into the knowledge, who came into, if you will, the the, the divine intention of God for his life, and, and and that's very very critical. And I'm hoping that all right, uh, uh, we will look at maybe few, maybe two or three other people, amen, uh, to 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 see how they they understand, they came into this understanding, and how, amen, their life was reordered, and how they focus, amen. In, in seeking to know, amen, and developing themselves to the extent that they began to fulfill, amen, God's plan for their life. Remember that vision is of the Lord. Vision is not from us. Vision doesn't come from us. Nobody wakes up to one money and decide, well, this is what, amen, I, I, I have, you know, come to believe that I'm called to do. No, you have to be, you have to be relayed by God. Amen. You, you have to encounter God. Yes. You, you have to come to a point, to a place of the end of yourself. In fact, all vision began, begins from, amen, the end of self. All vision begins from the from the end of your own idea. You will see people, amen, who are well, you know, are, are successful some of them at least that I've, i know all right they, they seem to be successful in 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 in, in their work all right in what what they're doing but at some point they began to feel this unrest they began to feel this agitation this on you know on, on, on dissatisfaction on the inside and you know of course many of them maybe then go into prayer and then god began to speak to them and say well this is what i've planned for you this is these are the things i have designed i I know of some very, very wealthy people. You have some of them here in Southern Africa, you know, you know, even in Zimbabwe where God began to align this, this very rich people and say, this is my plan for you. This is the reason why I established this business is for this purpose. So you can help certain people, so you can train certain people, so you can equip certain people and empower them. Like we, we, you know, we saw in Romans chapter 12, there are people called, yes, to finance the things of God. That's their calling. All right. And of course, you know that how God trains them, how God prepared them. And in fact, most of them, their training is more brutal than those people, that, than those we thought God has called into the pastoral. I know, I know a brother back there in Nigeria. This man, you talk about, you know, you talk about suffering, you talk about poverty. I mean, I saw, I, I mean, I, I used to go to this man's office. He's it, into all kinds of, but nothing is working for him. But this man is forever praying. Is forever praise, forever seeking the face of God. 
only for one day God decided to just give him just one contract. They just gave him one contract. And that was the beginning of a turnaround in his life. That was the beginning of a turnaround financially. And of course he knew, he knew, he knew why God ever blessed him. In fact, it was one of the people that, you know, basically, you know, encouraged me with the seed when I began ministry. The first man that gave me a check of 25,000, you know, Naira, I would never, I would never forget. And that was a lot of money back then to start a ministry. He said, well, I'm sowing this seed into, 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 into your life, all right, to, to start this thing God has placed in your heart. But this is a man who had nothing, you know. But, but, so, so there are people that God will, you know, you know, to the degree of the call and, 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 and the vision of God for your life is to the degree of, of the test. Many people fail the test because they feel this thing is just too much. It's too, just too gruesome. All right. <laughs> you live on, you live on cassava, you know, cassava gari. You know what we call gari in Nigeria? Cassava, you know, you live on that morning, afternoon, night. And you know God has called you, amen, to be a financier, to you know, to to, to bless people, and and you can't even you can't even provide for your family. Don't you think your wife is going to be laughing at you and say, "What kind of calling you think? Go and look for a job, go do something." <laughs> uh huh. That's why you have to know, amen, what God has called you. You have to stick to you. You have to stay with it. And God help you if you don't have, amen, a woman or a man, amen, who believes in you, who can agree with you. You know, because it's going to get to the point where somebody like, you know, uh, 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 Job's wife is going to advise you and say, hey, why don't you curse God and die? Because, I mean, God cannot be this brutal. God cannot be this, oh, if God ever, you know, place his hand on you, if God ever call you to do something for him, listen to this, your life can never be the same again. You will never, amen, yes, be able to fit into the normal life, amen. You will never be able to enjoy what everybody enjoy, yes. People will not understand why you feel, why your face looks so, you know, gloomy sometimes. Why you feel sad, amen. There's something called the burden. I've been sharing about that. Listen, if God ever say, you, I have called you. I want you to do X. Listen, they will continue to train you and refine you. Even when you think, ah, now I'm ready, and I'm ready, ah, I've, I've been passed that test another test is waiting for you particularly if they have called you to handle money to handle money that will shape people's destiny not like they put money in your hand amen and you now think you have arrived you think the money is for you no you are basically a custodian a dispenser of the economy of god there are people amen in this season being awakened being called into this grace and giftings so that amen when they give them amen Two billion US dollars. They are not. They are not shaking. Their their shirt is not changing. Amen. Their car. Amen. Their brand of car is not changing because they know why that money has been given to them. They know why that resource has been given to them. They know. They've been disciplined. See the reason why a lot of people cannot function in their giftings. They know God has called them to do X Y Z, but they are. Not, they don't have the discipline. They don't have the discipline. They don't have the courage to embrace the discipline. Amen. To be trained. I mean, a job of three and a half years took Jesus basically 18 years to be prepared. 18 years to be prepared. Prepare for, yes. If they, have, if they call you, amen, yes, to, to be positioned over a nation, amen, to define and, and, and determine the, the spiritual atmosphere of a realm. Listen to this. They will, they will train you. But this morning, I'm not talking about training, amen, for the purpose. We've, we've talked about that, amen, in the past. But maybe in the future, again, we'll look at that. But I tell you something. There is something that the Lord, amen, has designed and ordained for you. And uh, sometimes it is the process of what the Lord, amen, has prepared for you that is bringing all kinds of confusion. And you, you, you think it's the devil. And so you're looking for a prophet that will prophesy. You're looking for somebody that will pray for you and, and make things easy for you. No, no. Don't go to places where, amen, their prayer will abort the process of God's preparation for your life. You want to connect, amen, to, you know, to people who can see. Oh, Jesus, I was, was it yesterday or two days ago? I was, I was listening. I wasn't reading. I was listening, you know, uh, uh, the audio Bible about how, you know, you know uh, uh, Saul, the son of Kish, came into is it, it, assignment is is God called assignment? Remember, it was the people that said we want a king. Okay, so God, God said, I'll give you a king. Some give them a king, all right. 
And so, amen, they found the son of Kish, Saul, the son of Kish. And uh, uh, you know how God does his thing? He sets, he sets you know, things in motion. Yes, it's, it's, it's an event. You know, they, it's his father's, you know, a, a donkey that got missing. And they say, okay, you go look for, you know, uh, 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 your father's donkey. And he took, you know, well, you know their, their servant. And they went looking. No, it wasn't the donkey they were going to look for. Amen. It was God sending him, hallelujah, yes, to cross paths. To cross path, amen, with, with, with a prophetic voice that will align him to God's intention, to the reason why, hallelujah, he's been called. It's amazing that God uses natural things to, to connect us, to align us, amen, to divine things. God uses natural things. It was a donkey that got missing, but they needed something in the natural, hallelujah, to take him out of where he is. I just told you, some of you, amen, you will not come into God's purpose for your life until you leave that place, that room, amen. Yes, until you leave that environment, until you begin to think outside the walls of your world. I'm limited by the walls, by the walls of your world. Every world has got a wall. They said, come, let's go look for my father's donkey. And they searched everywhere they couldn't find. And the, and the, and the, and the young servant said, hey, this place, this, this area we're coming into, you know, there's a prophet there. There's a seer there. <laughs> you know, back in the days, they called prophets seers. Because prophets, they see things in the spirit. Imagine. People who are called into the prophetic ministry, the prophetic spirit of God. Yes. They live above the natural realm. You see, when you live above the natural realm, you can see things where, you know, things that others can see, right? Yeah, yeah. The prophet, prophet always look down, they see because they live in an elevated realm. So you are still struggling down there, they can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> they say there's a seer in this in this environment. But guess what? But we don't have uh, so 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 said, but I don't have anything to give to the seer because back in the days, when you're going to a seer, all right, it is mandatory that you bring something that you offer something, you know, it's like a sacrifice, it's like you know, it's like a, a, you know, a gift of acknowledgement. So he said, but I don't have anything. And that's where some of these foolish prophets today, you know, have taken scripture out of context. And said, if you're going to come to the prophet, you must bring something. Don't come to the prophet empty handed. You must bring something. You see, they, they take scripture out of context. Read that scripture. They say, back in the days, back in those days. I might say you should, when God placing your heart to be a blessing to the prophet, don't bless him. Of course. But it's not mandatory because Jesus today is our prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that we read and we see under the old covenant, amen, are fulfilled in Christ. So when you, when you, when you, when you are tracking, when you are coming into what has been written, that's why I keep telling people, amen, the old covenant is still very real because the old covenant is a foreshadow of Christ. If you want to understand the meaning of something under the old covenant amen make sure you have the ascended revelation of jesus yes and this is that that was spoken yes jesus is the fulfillment of the entire word of the entire law hallelujah every word spoken in the word of god amen is about jesus christ even that which does not seem to compute that your mind cannot comprehend amen there are people that can teach you that can track christ in that scripture they will track they will bring jesus christ out of it because he's been there from the beginning you understand? Yes. So don't take scripture out of context. They've they've mocked they've mocked the church. In the name of don't come to the prophet, amen. Empty handed. Anyhow. So the guy said, but I've got this, you know, I've got this coin, I've got this, you know, uh, uh, money with me. Okay, so we have something to give. <laughs> And when they went to the house of, you know, as they as they were going to the house of the seer, yes, the seer already waiting. Because God already prepared Samuel and said, Hey, this guy is coming. <laughs> I just love the scripture. You see, I'm not a good storyteller, but I love... When I read the word, I, 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 there's, there's a scripture. There's, there's something I want to share with us this morning, but I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to share on that. Because it's so powerful. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And, and this is something God amen, has used you know, in my early days of ministry. 
to speak to me and he's still guiding me you know as this morning as i was preparing that scripture again that scenario came to me again i'm like wow this is powerful but I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to share it because as we began to pray, I see that the Lord, amen, is leading us on a, on, a, on a different trajectory. And it's important that we follow that trajectory, that we follow that p- pattern, all right? I don't, I, don't, I don't force my way into what I have put down. No, I allow the Spirit. I, I prepare, but I allow the Spirit of God to guide me because there are all kinds of people sometimes that connect, that, that wants to listen, and God wants to speak to them. You understand? So don't crucify me sometimes if I began to, you know, speak in a particular way or I began to emphasize something. Say, oh, no, why is this man talking about me? I'm not talking about you. Well, if I'm talking about you, then God, amen, I single you out and you should be grateful. You should be happy that God is saying something, amen, that, that affects your life, amen, that speak into your life. You should be grateful for that. But you see some people, they've got a very wrong attitude. Rather than them continue to listen, then they turn off. They just leave the they leave the uh, the platform. They, I don't want to listen to this. That is the stronghold lying to you. That's the enemy lying to you. That's the enemy. That's that's a spirit, amen. Telling you, don't listen, don't listen. No, you should come back. You should come back and continue listening because God has a word for you. God has a word for you, amen. Like if you embrace the word, it will change your life. So anyhow, they went to the seer. They said, and they went to this man. Of course, they didn't know it was a seer. They said, can you direct us to the house of the seer? And the seer said, I am the seer. He said, go ahead of me. <laughs> And just wait for me. There, there are things that I need to speak to you about. Uh, by the way, uh, regarding your father's donkey, a man has been found. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's been found. You wait for me, but there's something bigger than your father's donkey that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Is the eyes of the nation not on you? So, amen, son of Kish. And so I say, but sir, why are you speaking to me like that? I'm, who am I? I'm just a son of Kish. I'm the least in my father's house. I'm not connected to, you know, to the royal blood. I'm not, no, no. What are you? Just wait for me. I'm coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's important that we understand the intentions of God. You see, all of this speaks to what? To the program of God. You see how the program of God is leading son of Kish. It was uh, a donkey that was missing. What has a donkey got to do with, you know, connecting to divine purpose? Oh, a lot. Yes. The reason why they place him in that workplace, all right, is not just for you to be making salary, amen, is because they want to connect you to something, amen. They want to connect you to somebody. God knows, amen, the next bridge you need to cross in order to come into, hallelujah, that which will refine you, enlighten you, you know, uh, 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 equip you, amen. Yes, allow you to have a better understanding. You see, a lot of us are living life outside of God's intention for our life. So God is doing a work of rearrangement in this season. All right, God is doing a work of rearrangement. Yes, just flow with him. Just be in the spirit and just flow. Lord, I don't understand what you're doing, but I'm just going to obey. I'm just going to be there. I'm just going to go to judge. But I don't know anybody living in judge. Why are you sending me to judge? But God said, go to judge. All right, I've got a plan for you in judge. I've got something waiting for you. And you know one thing about God, he doesn't tell you everything. He only tells you what you can understand now, what you can bear now. Jesus said, there's so many things I want to tell you, but you can't bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, it will tell you everything. It will guide you into all truth. Amazing. Yes. There are things that God wants to do in our life. That we have not fully aligned to. So this morning we're dealing with why we need to understand purpose in the context of vision. Are you still there? Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, I'm grateful. <clears throat> I rejoice in you. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. I feel a burden in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let your burden fall upon your people. Let them feel something new, something different. Oh, Father, give them a sense of duty. Give them a sense of duty, a sense of 
I need to search. I need to go on a journey. You can be in your house, but you're traveling. You're traveling. You're traveling light. You're journeying. You're going to realms and dimensions. Yes. <clears throat> traveling does not mean that you pack your baggage and leave. Sometimes your mind, you need to travel in your mind. You need to travel in the spirit. Hallelujah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm on a journey in the spirit. You move, you move. You see, you have to be there first before you go there. And the robot Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to be there first in the spirit before. You see, I was first here in South Africa in the spirit before I came here physically. They never send you to a place, amen, to go take possession physically, except first you have been, you have been there. You see, I have been here in the spirit. I, I had kind of, you know, surveyed the land in the spirit. You see, before they went to possess the land, they sent spies to go and work to spy the land. Is God speaking to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You don't know why they send you to judge. I don't know who you are. Maybe there's something they want you to do in judge. You say, but I don't like judge. I, I, mean, I don't want to go to judge. I, I, but, but they say, okay. But, but judge may be the point, the connecting point. You see, some of us, the vision that God has given to us need a connecting point. A connecting point. A contact point. Every vision has got a contact point, a contact person. <laughs> you see, before before you know, uh, uh, Paul began his work, they sent him for first to yes to Aeneas. Aeneas was his contact point. Aeneas was his contact point. Yes, the house of Aeneas was his contact point. That atmosphere is very important. The Lord may be speaking to somebody about George. I don't know, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe God has something for you in judge. Maybe it's a business. I don't know. I don't know. And it just came to my spirit. And it said, kill and eat. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord send you to a place or you know connect you. Maybe somebody from judge. I don't know. But that word just came to my spirit. If you're in South Africa, if you, <laughs> if you know anything about judge, you better start tracking in the spirit. Yeah. We don't know. I know that when I'm going to, uh, 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 where's that place, now, Eastern Cape, I used to pass through George. I've never, you know, stayed in George. I don't, I don't know anybody. Well, maybe people know me in George, but I don't know anybody in George. I'm just, you know, a crazy prophet speaking. <laughs> I'm just speaking. It's a prophesy. I, you know, we, we, when you're prophesying, you don't start thinking. Oh, no, you just speak. Open your mouth. And, and, yeah, that's it. That's why we're not afraid. You see, you will have said it before it makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. We'll always respond to your spirit. I will always respond to your spirit. No matter how I feel, no matter what I think, I push myself aside and allow your spirit to speak through me. Speak through me. May this word bring direction to your people. May this word bring hope. May, may it awaken their faith again. May they see beyond the fog. May they see beyond the mist. Ah, may your light illuminate their path. Help them, Lord, to see. Help them, Lord, to see. Help them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Clothe them with your presence. That even though they would need to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, ah, there is a there is a purpose beyond the valley. Help them, Lord. He said, for the joy that was set before, he had to go through the endurance of the cross. May we not, oh God, because of what we see right now, shun the vision ahead of us. May we not because of the challenge, the present trouble, the present tribulation, look for a shortcut. No, there are no shortcuts. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to us. Grant us insights. Grant us understanding. 
grant us clarity help us to remove the distractions speak speak your servant here that's what they taught, they taught Samuel. He was a young, this same guy amen, who became the seer of the land. He was taught by a priest whose season and time amen, had been judged. But he still carried the experience of the things of God. He said, when you hear his voice again, say, Lord, speak for your servant hears. When he speak, you must present yourself. You must align yourself to hear. So when the Lord came again and spoke, Samuel, he said, speak, Lord. And then he began to tell him the message. We honor you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that our people will emerge out of this order. Who will not be like Reed. It will not be like a reed. They will not be like a, 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 a leaf on the, on the tree blown here and there by every wind, oh God. Yes, every wind of foreign ideas called purpose. Every wind of foreign vision. Oh Father, we want stability. We want, yes, we want to be stable in the things of your spirit. We want to know, we want to understand your heart, your mind. We don't want to waste our time and the resources you have given to us again. Yes, to be here and there. So many things we have done that we thought was God. We thought, some of us would say, well, I prayed about it. I thought God, God, but, but uh, <laughs> money has been wasted. Time has been wasted. Relationship has been wasted. All kinds of things have been wasted because we never allow the Lord to go before us. We never allow ourselves to mature into the fullness of time. Help us, Lord. Why we need to understand purpose in the context of vision. Now, I've got some words. I'm just going to read them out. Hopefully, we'll close with this. Because I'm, I'm mindful that some of us are already in our workplace. Some of us are going to work. So hopefully again we'll come back later. Maybe I'll continue. Because I want to share on that uh, mess, uh, that scripture that I, I spoke to you about. All right, But let's quickly deal with this. Purpose defines and explains the course of an event. The reason why things look or pans out in a certain way. And why, amen, they should either be accepted or rejected. You see, when you when you wear the heart of a vision, God's vision for your life, it then defines to you, amen, what your purpose is. Amen. To life is all about. Remember that uh, purpose is very unique. <laughs> purpose is, in fact, purpose is what defines our uniqueness. Purpose is what defines our uniqueness because purpose, amen, defines the, the spirit or the heart of a vision. When you see somebody, you know, you know, uh, motivated in a particular way. When you see somebody act in a particular, particular behave in a particular way, uh, you know, like Jesus said, the zeal of my father's house consumed me. Yes, it was, it was the vision. Amen. Yes, you know, uh, uh, inspiring his action. Those actions are manifestations of purpose. You see. Those actions of Jesus, the way he talked, the way he spoke, the way he went, amen. And the, the way he rejected certain people, the way, you know, he dealt with certain things. And all of that are motivated because, amen, the vision is informing, amen, is objective. <laughs> is the vision of informing. They say, everybody's waiting for you. They want to see another miracle. Jesus said, no, no, no. Let's go to other village. You see, purpose is very powerful and it can be very dangerous if you don't understand vision. If you don't understand vision, purpose can be very de deadly. 
because purpose will summon every resource in the inside of you and focus it on whatever you want to fulfill <laughs> so be careful amen that what you call a purpose amen, amen is not connected to a wrong thing because purpose somebody who is dying but believe that he's got a purpose to live <laughs> <laughs> suddenly the person gets up from the hospital they're like but we but we thought you were dying no 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 because something on the inside of him said i've got a reason to leave you see how dangerous how powerful purposes that's why you cannot afford amen to to harm to harm the arsenal of your vision with the wrong purpose because purpose has a way of drawing resource. Purpose has a way of drawing courage. Purpose has a way, amen, of aligning to, you know, to the right people, amen, or sometimes the wrong people. You understand this? So, it's not enough to know about purpose. Purpose, like I always say, is a, is a means to an end. Purpose is what, you see somebody die, he's dying. He's dying on, he's dying on the bed. And he, and, and the purpose said, you have not, you have not, you have not, you have not defined the vision. Uh, you have not defined the essence and the vision of this 12th, 12th son of yours. And the Bible said, and Jacob got up from his bed and he sat down. And he sat down and began to prophesy upon his 12 tribes. That's purpose. Be afraid of somebody driven by purpose. I said be afraid of anyone driven by purpose, either good or bad. <laughs> because purpose does not look at time. Purpose look at a man, the fulfillment of an agenda. That's why you never, please hear me, never speak about purpose outside the context of the right vision, of, of his vision. Let's put it that way, of his vision. Never speak of purpose outside the context of vision. God never gives us a vision outside of the context of purpose and never gives us purpose outside the context of vision. You, there is no place you'll find in the word of God that God calls somebody to do something and God did not define the purpose of that vision. Because that will be tantamount to the waste, the wastage of resource. In fact, that will be tantamount, amen, <laughs> to the destructions of so many things. Have you seen how people can, can take a purpose, you know, they will take godly thing, amen, and twist it for a wrong purpose. And the thing causes chaos and commotion and destruction. That's what we've seen in the church. Men, grace by God and power to equip people. They take that, they take that resource, amen, and put it, amen, with the wrong thing. And they, you see the destruction that is taking place in the church. There are a lot of people today, they, they can take this message I'm preaching on purpose and arm that thing with the wrong idea and arm it with their own ungodly philosophy. And they create more chaos. That's why as I'm teaching, I'm trying to help you understand that this is not just about uh, uh, finding your purpose. Your purpose is locked to your God-given vision. Your God-given vision defines your purpose. What is your purpose? What is purpose? Purpose is everything that God has given to you or that is in you to make you make things happen in the human realm. Purpose will birth idea. Purpose will birth creativity. Purpose will birth courage. Purpose will birth, hallelujah, faith. Purpose will birth, hallelujah, yes, in inventions. You see, you can birth so many things. But if those things that you have birthed are not advancing, you know, the intentions of God, are not, are not advancing the kingdom of God, that's destruction, isn't it? Of course, that is. So, purpose defines and explains the course of an event. When things are happening in a particular way, what you want to find out is what is God's purpose here? What, what is the Lord up to? What's God doing here? 
Amen. Your, 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 your reaction should not be, hey, devil, I bind you. Find out what you see. You see, you see, all of this thing, see how, how it's connected to, amen, the prophetic spirit. Because if you don't have the prophetic spirit, you won't understand what I'm talking about. It will be strange to you. Why will they ask, amen, the prophet of the Lord to go and marry an alot? You see, you see, that's why I would say it must be understood within the context of a vision. What is God trying to say? Why will God use the life of one man to speak, amen? To what is going on, amen, within the nation. You see, if you don't understand that, you forever be fighting God. In fact, you will be like Peter. You say, Killer, you say, No, 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 me, no, I'm not gonna, no, 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 God, I'm not gonna do this. Purpose defines and explains the course of an event. You see, purpose gives you wisdom, understanding. The reason why things look or pan out the way they are and why certain things should be accepted <laughs> so you see when you understand purpose what you should be binding is what you may be losing and what you're losing is what you'll be binding amen you purpose when define how you should pray amen? the kind of prayer to pray and the kind of prayer not to pray even when somebody says, come let's go let's go to pray the man of god come pray you say no 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 sorry <laughs> this kind of prayer <laughs> this kind of prayer will lead me off course leave me the way i am because everything you do is tagged with a divine mandate. You're not just looking for a way out. There are purposes that will lead you to the prison. Because there's a bigger vision. There's a bigger earlier fish they want to catch. Amen. There's a there's a something something bigger. They want to, yes. And they know you are the only one that can do it. <laughs> and they know that for you to be able to do it, you have to be in a very tight place. You didn't hear me. You don't, you don't want to hear the truth. So they would lead you. The purpose will lead you to the prison. You see, in the natural realm, if you're looking at the walls of a prison as a place of limitation, as a place, haven't you watched movies? The man want to penetrate <laughs> the, the heart, amen, of, of the most deadly, you know, gang, gang, gangster leader is in prison. So, so the, the, the FBI or the, the, the CIA people, amen, they take one of their own, amen, and they make sure he commits, you know, some certain crime or whatever, you know, and they send him to prison. They're not just sending him to prison. They want him to get access. Certain access don't come, you know, nice in the natural Oh God, help me here. Certain access, amen, will require you, amen, yes, <laughs> to be in places that naturally you don't want to be. <laughs> yes, you don't want to be there because you look at that thing and you say, no, no, this, you know, the kind of theology you have built, the kind of ideology of Christianity you have built, you say, this, this one is not my portion. Devil, I bind you. I reject you in Jesus' name. Hey, <laughs> but they say, but we brought you here for a reason. Don't you know that? Don't you know there's a reason why Paul and Silas were sent to the prison? Don't you know that? Why, why Peter, amen, was put in the prison? Don't you understand that? Hello? You see, I'm still trying to understand some of this because I ask myself, Lord, why did you, why did you put me in stuff? Why, why did you allow this in my life? But I prayed, but I asked you, but I, oh yeah, you did pray and I answered your prayer. That's why you're there. <laughs> so what do you think should be the answer of the prayer? <laughs> Hello? What you assume is the answer of your prayer. Sorry, alas, it's not so. <laughs> yes. Because how we presume and assume answered prayer is far fetched from God's intention. God, I'm praying, send me to prison so that I can connect. Woo, Lord, devil, bind you. I refuse, I reject that kind of prayer. How would you be praying such a prayer? That's a wrong prayer. You see, when you understand God's plan and purpose and you're following him, you will pray certain prayer that will not make sense to the nat nat natural human ears, you know? In fact, <clears throat> people will begin to shut you down. <laughs> Jesus was praying, uh, was speaking to the disciples, uh, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to die. I'm going to be handed. Uh, Peter was rebuking him, saying, no, you, you are the Messiah. They gave me the revelation, you are the Messiah. Why would you go? <laughs> you see, you cannot understand purpose except you begin to grow and mature in the things of the Spirit. You have to grow in the ways of the Spirit because that is what will guide and motivate 
your directions and your intentions. So you know, amen, that certain things should be embraced or rejected. Amen. <clears throat> Let's continue. I said, purpose defines, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and explains the cause of an event, the reason why things look or pan out in a certain way, and why they should either be accepted or rejected. And I went further, I said, however, several folks, several believers, several people, amen, in my opinion, within the body of Christ, do still do not understand or can correctly, amen, differentiate between vision and purpose and that's what I've been trying to explain and of course this has caused unnecessary confusion because if you don't understand something alright how would you come into agreement either with God or with men we only agree amen based on our terms of understanding hello we only agree based on our terms of understanding understand is very important amen to 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 agree if 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 there's no understanding meaning that why would i be can two walk together the same can two walk together except they be in agreement so what what should be allowing us to agree like you will know today that if there's any organization any society that is that is so divided amen on earth today is the church is the church and the reason for that is because we 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 do not agree we do not understand amen uh, what god's purpose and intention is for his church in fact amen we don't understand amen what the church is and how the church is defined by the way i asked amen uh, uh, uh church gpt yesterday was it two days ago i said you know can you tell me the difference between uh uh uh, uh you know ecclesia and church because today there's a lot of confusion between you know the term ecclesia or the church you know at four five ten years ago everybody's talking you know church the body of christ the church of the living god all right and we are talking about that in the context of advancing the purposes of god suddenly what i'm hearing is no we do not we no longer we no longer relate amen to to the body of christ as the church but as the ecclesia so i'm saying to myself as phraseology and terminology now becomes an issue amen you see these are secondary things that we have made primary oh yeah oh yeah see when i speak like this sometimes we touch on toes i'm not going to allow myself amen to be captured that's why in fact that's one of the reasons why i remove myself from certain you know groups who are into uh, ecclesia you know but no no I i'm not going to get myself distracted because i know what god is saying i know what god wants and i understand amen how how he looks at his church whatever name you call it in fact name in this last day that we call certain things are going to put us in trouble There is a church functioning somewhere in China. They don't call themselves church. They don't call themselves ecclesia. They don't call themselves whatever name you, you think is the right name. Amen. But they are functioning within the, within the metrics, within the spirit of Christ. That's why I keep saying, if we do not understand who Christ is, if we don't have the revelation of the ascended Christ, you see, we will be we will be we will be building all kinds of little doctrines and we'll be fighting ourselves amen that's why we get divided we'll be fighting ourselves on terms and terminologies amen and physiology you know it's ecclesia is dimension you know, no excuse me what is the spirit of christ for the church for his body what is he doing if i can find that can i connect with it so we're for we, tomorrow it's going to be another thing that we're going to be emphasizing but it's not speaking to the spirit of how we can indeed hallelujah merge work together because the church is a spiritual organization it's a spiritual organ yes the church is both an organization and organism all right every organism ha has amen you know a way an administration of functioning Yes, every part has its own place of fitting into function to bring out, amen, the, the intentions of God. If we're divided on minor things, on primary things, how can we have the strength and the courage to fulfill, hallelujah, the very primary purpose of why we exist as a body of Christ? 
I am so fed up of those little, little camps we're building. Little, little camps here. Little, little camps. Everybody build their own camps. Oh, yes. It's the ecclesia camps. Now it's the church camp. Now it's the apostolic camp. I'm so fed up of all of those things. Whoever is listening to me, you better know where I stand. Where I see the spirit of Christ flowing. That's why we have to track in the spirit. Wherever I see people flowing in the spirit of Christ, when people flow in the spirit of Christ, there will be order there. Regardless of the name, you call them, there will be order there. The spirit of Christ is what guides us, is what leads us. Anything that is done that is being said outside of the ascended revelation of Christ should be rejected. Even doctrine can be, hallelujah, can be projected in, a, in an error form, yes. There are little, little doctrine, little, little, you know, foxes, little, little yeast we're bringing uh, in, in trying to make this thing sound better, look better, amen, feel better, that we're bringing to corrupt the things of God. You see, as a prophet, God shows me this thing, and it's my duty to talk about them. I've dealt with issues of doctrine and on this platform we've dealt with doctrine and we've dealt with the spirit behind doctrines. I want to understand the theology of the ascended Christ. I want to understand what the church of Christ, you call it ecclesia, what it means and represents in the earth. Not fighting on the name, no. It, it, it was called ecclesia, it was changed. Can change it to whatever you want to change it to if it's reflecting Christ I want to be there it can sound like Christ look like Christ if it's not showing Christ is the Antichrist I think that's a good one there regardless of who is preaching it or where it's coming from or who wrote the book you see all these ideas all this issue thing within us those things got to die that's why you find people talking about kingdom things talking about uh, uh, apostolic thing talking about ecclesia talking about they are not dead yet they are not they are, these are still living people trying to preach you cannot handle hallelujah, the gospel of the kingdom if you're not dead you, the invitation earlier to enter the kingdom is death because when you die, you come into the order of resurrection. What will be flowing out of you, hallelujah, will be for Christ to be exalted. That's the definition of resur the, resur the, resur the resurrected gospel. is about, amen, if Christ be lifted, if I be lifted up. Not you, not your idea, not your doctrine, not your phraseology. The thing that, amen, I ran away from almost two decades ago. When WBM began to highlight all kinds of phraseology, 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 is the same thing I see happening today again. It's the same thing. The same thing is happening today. Phraseology. We've got to wake up. We've got to know what the Spirit of God is demanding of us. If you walk into a place under five minutes, you should be able to speak the Spirit that rules, that governs. The spirit, amen, that is motivating the message. That the spirit that brought the gathering. Conference here, conference there, seminar here. When you walk into a place, you will pick it. You will pick it if you have the spirit of God. That's why it's important, amen, that you never allow anything negative to be in your life. Because you need that spirit of God to permit every part of you. So that when you walk into a place, you can pick. You can sense. You know what's going on. You are not deceived. can't be hearing this truth and be walking into a place that they are seeking to lie to and you still hallelujah praise God because everybody is hallelujah praising God. No, they will corrupt the seed of the vision of God for your life. I ran away from some of this thing yet I'm, I'm hearing these things are coming back again from another, you know, another front from another, you know, dimension if you will yeah, it's the same spirit this spirit never dies easily. It continue. It continue. This thing continue. That's why, when you stand on the truth, you become the enemy, and you can define the truth because the truth is not just an information. The truth is not just a doctrine. The truth, Hallelujah, is the entire life of a being called Christ. He's the litmus test. So 
There are divisions, setbacks in several ministry and relationship because we don't know God's vision. We don't understand God's plan, God's purpose. God bring two people together. God bring groups together. And this is what I want you guys to do. Because we do not fully understand the mind of God, the heart of God. Amen. The vision of God. Then you bring your own idea. I bring my own idea. And the ideas start fighting each other. And you know, you want to prove because you have more money than me. So, so your idea must stand. Or because I mean, I'm the, I have the revelation. But you, <laughs> and we start, at the end of the day, nothing is done. Nothing gets done because we always bring our agenda into the things of God. We corrupt it. Wherever God, amen, begin to smell flesh, self, in his thing, he leaves the place. He leaves it. He leaves it. Okay, go ahead, do your own thing. He leaves. Even if it's five people or 50,000 people, God will leave the place. Because God never used people amen, who have their own idea to run his thing. You can't run the things of God with your own idea. He will leave. You can't box God. You can't limit him to a phrase. You can't limit him to a, you know, to, to a doctrine. Christ is the essence of all doctrines. That's why I keep saying. If you don't have the revelation of Christ, every other revelation you have, amen, is skewed. Is disorder. Can never produce the life of God. The things of the spirit in the earth will never produce, hallelujah, redemption, will not birth, hallelujah, yes, transformation. It may birth a lot of things that people will gather around and people will scream around and shout and hail and love until they see something better. <laughs> until they see something better and then they will leave you. We live in a world of recycling. We are told that two can only walk together except they be in agreement. What is the time of our agreement? The time of our agreement must be sourced by the vision. Listen to this. I love this. Agreement is underscored whenever you talk about agreement. Because without agreement, marriage will not work. Business will not work. You can't run a nation. I mean, everything will collapse. Agreement, amen, is underscored by the level and quality of how we see and interpret the uniqueness of an assigned vision, amen, that brings, <coughs> excuse me, that brings or binds two or more people together. Let me repeat that again. That's very powerful. Agreement is underscored by the level and quality of how we see and interpret the uniqueness remember i didn't just say the vision because every vision is unique therefore amen how we agree has to be unique amen how how uh, uh, um sally and john agrees is different to how peter amen and mary agrees because their vision amen is what defines their agreement remember we all don't have you know a blanket agreement no 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 no, no. our agreement amen yes has to be unique because there's something that we are agreeing upon there's something we have to agree for we don't just agree for agreement's sake no no we agree because there is something that that is bigger than both of us oh lord jesus there's something that is bigger than there's something that brought both of us together there's something that binds well you know i always talk about you know the upper room imagine uh, 120 people with different ideas, with different belief system, with different look, with different, you know, you know, our, our personalities, all of that. Yes, yet they all have one purpose in common. You see, it's that one purpose that brought them together. The moment we lose sight of that one purpose, you see, we will begin to fight all the various unique uniqueness. Uh, you why? because it's the nature of the fallen man, all right, to want to to to, to desire uniformity. Why, why are we all not speaking the same thing? No, no, no. We're not called to speak the same thing. We're called to agree on the, the same objective. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah, the kingdom of God is not, it's not uniformity. The kingdom of God is not uniformity. The kingdom of God, hallelujah, is, is united based on a mandate, based on a vision. 
You see, churches and, 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 and networks and communities that want everybody to sound alike, look alike, you know, maybe even think alike, amen, is a cult. Because that's not the will of God for us. God wants all of us to have the mind of Christ. When we all have the mind of Christ and Christ in his wisdom, amen, as he has shaped and fashioned us. You see, this morning, all right, I'm dressed, I'm dressed like uh, my people. I, I, I just thought, oh, let me look different this morning. I, I, you know, I've not been wearing this for a long time. And I, I love this. I used to love wearing this. You see, <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you one of the reasons why I stopped wearing some of my Nigeria. Of course, many of them are small for me now, but you know, I noticed when I was when I was wearing this, you know, the first time I came to South Africa, I used to like to dress, you know, my, from my, my African attire, and I realized that, you know, I, I go to certain places, and the way they look at me is like uh, they don't want to accept me, you know, because I'm dressed a bit different, you know, I look a bit different, you know, and but, but more so, you know, I look like something that they are not used to, that you know, they can't relate to it. So I said to myself, maybe this is wisdom. Maybe I should stop dressing like that and just look, you know, dress in a way that I can blend into everybody. And, you know, me before I will, I will not, I will continue to dress the way I want to dress. Is it because that's me? You understand? But to wisdom say no. For now, you, you need to stop dressing like this, you know. Wear something, that, wear just a shirt and a t-shirt. Of course, I stopped wearing suits. <laughs> that's also deliberate. Because I was also trying to, you know, Make a point. You don't have to wear a suit to make a, to, you know, to prove to, to prove that you are a call of God that you have an anointing because the anointing is not in the suit. Just like the anointing is not in this. But I love this because, first of all, that's where I come from. This is how we love to dress. You can see this one is a bit small for me, but that's just who I am. You know, I love it. I want to dress like this, you know. But for the sake of the mission, the sake of the vision, the sake of what was given to me. You see, this is secondary, but it's important. So I decide, okay, I'll put it aside. All right? But I think I've got into the level right now that I can wear whatever I want to wear that I feel I need to wear, not because I need to make an impression or not because I'm trying to win. As I've passed that stage. You see, you've got to understand the various stages of your work with God. You understand? Okay. That's, that's a good one. So agreement, amen, is underscored by the level and quality of how we see and interact or interpret the uniqueness of an assignment or a vision that either binds or brings two people together. That's very important. Now listen to this. I said, it is the understanding of our agreement that allow us to compromise. Yes, because as I just told you now, I had to compromise. I said, okay, I'm not going to wear this again. All right. They say, if what you're wearing, all right, is going to cause your brother to fall. Okay, don't do it for your brother's sake. That's still scriptural. Hello. That's still scriptural. If what you're eating is going to cause your brother to fall, they say, for your brother's sake, don't do it. You see? But you see, you've got to, that scripture, you've got to interpret it in the context, amen, of the season, of the environment, or where you are. All right? There are places where you have the liberty to wear whatever you want to wear, eat whatever you want to eat. Yes, nobody is going to look at you and because everybody there is mature. But if you're dealing with an immature people, you've got to consider them. Paul said, I became everything, amen, to all men, to win some, not all. This is good, right? Good teaching. So, so the understanding of our agreement is what allow us to compromise on secondary. Look at that. I didn't say primary. On secondary values and methods that are best suitable for the fulfillment of a vision's objective. I'm going to round up with this one because of time. The understanding of our agreement. Two can only work together except they be in agreement. Thank you, my dear sister. Great teacher. Yes. <laughs> so can only be in agreement. Amen. And that agreement, of course, we say is source on vision. Vision has two, two dimensions. All right. There's the, there's the secondary aspect of the vision and there's the primary aspect of that vision. All right. So how we understand each other would define the level of our agreement. Okay. Very important. We define the level of our... I said to understand... agreement we'll be able to compromise 
a secondary issue. Now, this secondary issue is very important. Maybe when, when I come again, we'll talk about it. Because secondary issue is then deals with, you know, methods. How do we do it? How do we work together? Because listen to this. Every vision requires resources and relationship. To fulfill vision, you require two major things. You require, of course, vision comes from God. But vision requires relationship, amen, and resources. And all of this, all right, God, God, God sourced them through people or God invests them into people. So if you don't know how to interact, how to relate, you don't know where to be, how to talk to people, what to do, you're going to be making a big mistake. All right? In fact, you may spend longer time because you lack, you know, good relational, you know, intelligence. And certain people, they don't, they don't know how to relate. All right? You, you fight on what you're not supposed to be fighting over. Understanding of an agreement allows us Remember, the, the purpose of agreement, amen, is based on what? The vision. I said vision has what? The secondary side and the primary side. The secondary side of a vision, you can't compromise on it. This is what God wants. This is what God says. This is what God, amen, desire to be birthed in the earth. This is the church. The church is not, an, it's not, it's not, it's not a location. It's not, you know, a building. All right? You, you can be running a church within a company. You can be running a church, hallelujah, within the palace. All right? You can be running a church within, you know, an environment of an hospital. You can be running a church within the military amen, uh, 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 unit. You can be run, you can run a church, amen, within the financial world. You can run a church, amen, within a school. Because the church is the instrument by which God uses, amen, yes, to influence, amen, his intentions and his purpose. But this church is not one. This church is a group of people who have, amen, yes, the, 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 the life and the nature of Christ who are burdened, amen, about God's desire and, and intentions in the earth. The church, basically, like I always say, is the pathway, is the passage by which issues of the kingdom gets to be manifest in the earth. So you cannot limit the church to your own idea. You see? So how we understand the, 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 the secondary function of the church has to, be, has to be done with what? Our sense of agreement. The environment will shape our sense of agreement. Amen? The location, the kind of people we're sent to, the kind of people we're dealing with, all of that is very critical. All right? How you will run a church successfully in America amen, may not work here in South Africa. How you will run a church successfully. Remember when I talk about the church, I'm not talking about that thing you see out there. I'm talking about amen, the church of the Lord, the church of Christ's intention. I'm talking about the church that is positioned hallelujah, as a governmental voice over a realm. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, every church has its own unique voice, vision, image, amen, essence, amen. Yes, there's a way the church in South Africa will smell. It's different from the way the church, amen, in UK will smell. You have to consider the environment, the, the, the people, the place, yes, because all of that is packaged within the vision. Lord, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. See, I didn't even get to talk about Paul, you know, but of course many of the things we've been talking about, amen, speaks into the, the character and the nature of how Paul understands how he was called to function. But we're still going to talk about that later on, all right? So maybe later in the day or tomorrow we'll continue. But I think this is very, very good teaching, amen. I think this is something God really, really, amen, uh, 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 is proud of as uh, something that should enhance our ability and capability, amen, in functioning the way God will have us function. Thank you so very much, uh, Stan Kumisa. Great teaching, amen. We, we want to thank God for that. Indeed, is a great teaching. And I, I'm so grateful that the Lord, amen, has given us such a voice and expression. Father, we bless your name. We, we, we rejoice in these things. We celebrate you once again this morning. Our heart rejoices in the things that you have said, the way you've spoken to us. 
thank you, Father, that your word will continue to guide us. Your word will continue to lead us. Your word will continue to inform our hearts and our minds, oh God. We will be a people ready and prepared for your glory. Thank you, Lord, that we will live within the ambience of your divine counsel. Yes, we will live within the cutting edge, oh God, of your yes intentions for our life. We are a people being awakened, yes, to purpose, to vision. Yes, our focus this day is growing. We will not allow the enemy to identify jack your counsels and plans and purposes for our life. We will be a people ready. We will be a church ready. Your name will be glorified. The world will see, will know. Yes, Lord. And we will bring harvest, oh God, into your house because this is our desire. This is our prayer, oh God. So we thank you once again for the movement of your intentions in the earth. Thank you, Lord, for the church across the nations growing and increasing in limbs and bounds. Your spirit, oh God, yes, is infusing new life within us. We are right up, who will not be stopped, who will not be hindered. You will have yourself a people in the earth, oh God, who will glorify your name. Thank you for every listener this morning. I pray, oh God, for everyone, my brothers and my sister, wherever they have joined us from, oh God, I pray for them. I ask, oh God, this morning that you continue to bless them, increase them, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Priscilla, Sister Kumisa, Brother Charles, oh God, Brother uh, uh, Shafiki. Thank you, Father, for, yes, uh, uh, my dear sister, uh, uh, Sister Tina, uh, Brother Mervyn, every Everyone, and those that will be listening to this uh, uh, broadcast later, wherever they will be listening from, I pray your grace, your goodness, your favor, oh God, upon their life. But most I pray that you grant them an opening into, yes, the directions of your counsels for their life, oh God. I thank you, Spirit of the Lord, that each and every one of them, Lord, will bring praise and glory to your name. No weapon of the enemy from the fashion against them or their family, Lord, will prosper. Thank you, Father, that they will not be afraid to start to move oh God thank you Lord for yes whatever you want to do you're doing right now in judge we thank you Lord for it thank you Lord for alignment thank you for redirection reconnection thank you Father for provision thank you Father for yes a sense of conviction thank you Spirit of God that this is a brand new day we embrace your ways you embrace your will we embrace your counsel we declare in the name of Jesus you'll be glorified in our life bless your people bless our community. Bless, oh God, yes Father, yes your people Lord, yes with truth, with wisdom, with knowledge. Let your house be built in them and through their life. May they continue to prosper in your endeavors, oh God, for their life. I bless you Father. I honor your name for a glorious day like this, a brand new day, for a new season. Oh, hallelujah. We celebrate this openings of the heavens. Thank you Lord that we enter this door that you have opened for us. We access as you have spoken to us. Uh, we need to have a spirit of wisdom the knowledge and maturity to know how to access realms and doors because certain doors yes may not look palatable may not feel okay in the natural but yet they are the passage they are the they are the gateway yes law to access to enter to receive the next thing that you have ordained for us so father help us not to sample things not to look at things in the natural realm and then judge oh god open our eyes open our mind open our understanding help us father to have clarity clarity of understanding clarity of vision clarity of purpose lead us oh god to the place of your good intention oh father we thank you honor and praise glory majesty dominion be ascribed unto you lamb of god thank you for the things that you have established this morning we go forth this morning we break forth we break barriers we break limitation yes lord we take a journey yes we move we see we hear lord we, we survey the land and we are able to possess thank you for the vision of caleb thank you lord for an undying passion for the things of your spirit we will continue lord to look into the perfect love liberty you will be glorifying our life hallelujah honor and praise be unto you lamb of god praise god praise the lord hallelujah friends once again thank you for everyone for being part of this uh, uh, wonderful live broadcast i'm grateful to every one of you i am so so uh, 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 appreciative for your joining i know uh, many people are already in india various workplace but may God continue to bless you and may he continue to lead you and guide you so your life amen, will bring glory and praise to him in everything that you do may you amen, think of 
God's vision first, God's will first, amen, so that, amen, he can continue to resource what you're doing. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful and a fruitful day. We love you. We love you so very much, and I'll continue to pray for you. Please continue to pray for me. I need all your prayers, amen. God bless you. See you again.